The Evo Roadrunner is the seated electric scooter that started our whole love affair with seated scooters for adults. Two years ago, we got hold of a prototype 35 mile per hour dual motor Emu Roadrunner and made a video about changes we thought would make it even better. Changes worked because the production version basically disappeared from our office and became Chuck's daily ride. In fact, when we took it to CES 2022, people rode it more than the Dualtrons we brought. Since then, Voro Motors has also brought out this super popular Roadrunner Pro, which goes 55 miles per hour. But this is the new eMove Roadrunner V2, the updated version of their original budget-friendly removable battery dual motor seated scooter. It looks like a compact dual motor e-bike, but it's not an e-bike because it has pegs instead of pedals, which enhances cornering and makes it a more portable e-bike alternative that won't grease up the back seat of your car because it has no chain. But it rides just like an e-bike, except better, unless you really like pedaling. Despite its 35 mile per hour top speed, anybody can ride this thing. It's literally faster than a car across town, and of course, way, way faster than conventional bikes and most e-bikes. To give you an idea, here's a clip of me zooming by a typical rental scooter. <laughs> the only people I think shouldn't ride this are kids and young teens, and that's just because of the 35 mile per hour top speed. Emu scooters are designed in Los Angeles, California by Voro Motors, one of the biggest brands in the US for scooters. They've been pioneers of some of the best seated scooters. The 35 mile per hour Roadrunner V2 is currently on pre-order for $14.95, while the 55 mile per hour eMove Roadrunner Pro we've recently reviewed costs $28.95. For those of you who missed out on the insane and no longer available Roadrunner Tronic that came with Ryan motor controllers, Voro still offers an inexpensive kit that'll handle up to 10 kilowatts, so you can build your own insane seated scooter if you want to, and we'll leave a link to that down below. If you want to switch back and forth from riding standing up to riding seated, time Tons of scooters will do that, but if you know you want to ride seated all the time, seated scooters just do it better because of their larger wheels and because the steering geometry is optimized for the best handling while sitting down. The Roadrunner V2 is fast but not furious. This is a chill ride with super smooth throttle and no wheel spin ever from its 350 watt front and 500 watt rear motor. The larger Roadrunner Pro on the other hand feels more like a small version of my motorcycle because it weighs almost twice as much as the Roadrunner V2. The combination of 35 mile per hour top speed and smooth throttle make the V2 a great high speed, low stress commuter. The V2's smaller frame and headlight also help it avoid looking like a motorcycle. This is handy because the lack of a deck means this is not only not an e-bike, it's technically not a scooter either. But after more than two years of riding Roadrunners, we've never even had a second look from local police. So while this form factor may or may not be technically legal where you live, there's a 99% chance that if you get into trouble, it's because you were going 35 miles per hour where you shouldn't have been, rather than for resembling a motorcycle because it just doesn't look like one. I don't say this often, but the throttle response is basically perfect. It has square wave motor controllers, but it feels as smooth as some scooters that have sine wave controllers. For example, it feels smoother than the sine wave controller on the new eMove Cruiser S. Speaking of throttle, we love the thumb throttle on the original Roadrunner V1, but the V2 gets a new one, which we like even better, with a nice rubber pad right here. And no more mystery buttons. The original Roadrunner had R for dual motor and I for single motor, or was it the other way around? You can see the problem. The V2 has a leaf for eco slash single motor and a rocket for dual motor. So it's easy to tell which one's which. Though I wish I didn't have to toggle back from single to dual motor every time I turn power off and back on. The headlight and turn signal buttons are here and have little indicator lights to let you know they're working. And the horn appropriately for a Roadrunner goes meep meep. <laughs> the display is straightforward, showing speed, which of the three ride modes you're using, and four bars of battery level. It's not super bright, but it's definitely readable in direct sunlight. I like the shape of the grips with palm support, but I don't love that they twist around while you're riding. You can fix it in 10 seconds by adding a zip tie on each grip or glue them in place by sliding them off, spraying some hairspray inside and sliding them back on. So what else is new on the V2? Ride quality has improved in two ways. First, it has 14 inch tubeless tires replacing the tube tires that it had. They feel great and are more resistant to getting pinch flats if you hit a curb or a pothole. This means you can get a cushier ride by running lower tire pressure if you want to. 
Another advantage of going tubeless is, if you ever do get a flat, there are two easy fixes, which we'll show you later. Yes, we're getting in sort of a habit here of breaking things on purpose in these videos. The second improvement to ride quality is the seat. The Roadrunner V2 now comes with the same awesome seat that the Roadrunner Pro has. It's so much thicker and more comfortable than the seat on the V1. For those of you who already own a V1, good news. It's available as an upgrade for $85, including the adapter bracket. They also have a new pizza bag that looks handy and fits both the V1 and V2. Like the original, the Roadrunner V2 has front suspension that works well to smooth out the bumps in the road. I love that I can adjust the stiffness of the suspension with my foot while riding. The label says ABS Plus, but it has nothing to do with ABS brakes. It's, it's just an homage to a mountain bike fork called the Absolute Plus by Manitou. One thing we missed from the Roadrunner Pro is the V2 still has no rear suspension, so look ahead and lift up out of the seat if you see a big pothole coming. This frame is so solid. Rider weight capacity is 330 pounds. So with that and the power of dual motors, this is a great choice for heavier riders. The handlebars are adjustable to fit a wide range of heights too. So you can go from upright to full on cafe racer. Fender protection is good out back, so you won't get a stripe up your back from riding in the rain, but the front fender could be a little longer. Also be advised there's still no IP rating and the official spec just says it's okay for light rain. So splash at your own risk. Up next, I stab a tire. And we've got tested performance numbers. But first, if you're interested in either of the Roadrunners, check this video's description for links to the latest pricing. And any coupon codes we could find for you will be down there too. Or you can just click right here. One of the advantages of having tubeless tires is that if you get a puncture, you can repair it in two different ways. One, use a tire plug kit. Now I'm not gonna make a whole how-to video here, but the important part is you can plug a tire without removing the tire or the wheel from the scooter, but only if it's tubeless. It's considered a temporary repair, but I've used this exact type of plug for thousands and thousands of miles on my cars and motorcycles and it worked fine. The other way is to add tire sealant. You can use it on tubed or tubeless tires, but it just works better on tubeless. And if the tire plug or tire sealant don't work on their own, you can do both together. The official top speed from our two direction top speed run was 35.4 miles per hour, about the same as the V1. Not bad since typical top speed you could expect in this price range is usually about 29 or 30 miles per hour. Range is also outstanding. I rode the V2 exactly 35 miles on the Rider Guide range test course. For the price, the only thing we've seen that would beat this is the eMove Cruiser or the eMove Cruiser S. But with the Roadrunner, you can double your range to 70 miles by bringing along a second battery. It weighs 15 pounds and fits in a backpack. The odd thing I noticed about the battery meter was the first half was very optimistic. I went 17 miles before it dropped below four bars. At 28 miles, it was still showing half full and then dropped quickly between there and 35 miles when the range test ended. Acceleration from the Roadrunner V2's dual motors is brisk, but not crazy. The V2's zero to 15 time of four seconds flat is on par with the quickest single motor scooters like the eMove Cruiser S, but not as quick as most dual motor sports scooters that will do it in about three seconds or less. Hill climbing is exceptional though, especially for a seated scooter. You can climb most hills at 25 miles per hour or more. On our test hill, it was almost as fast as one of my favorite lightweight hill climbers, the Unagi Voyager. And it beat the new Nightbot Max G2 to the top of our test hill by nearly a second. The braking distance on our V2 was exactly the same as our tests of the Roadrunner V1, but the brakes behave very differently. Both the V1 and V2 use X-Tech semi-hydraulic brakes, which are cable operated at the levers, but have a hydraulic system built into the caliper. Our V1 required a very hard squeeze to come to a stop, but our V2 stops easily with just two fingers on each brake lever. The Roadrunner is way more portable than a typical e-bike, but probably won't fit in the trunk of your car. On the other hand, it should fit easily in the back of a crossover or SUV. I love the portability of folding handlebars, but I also usually hate them because most of them wiggle. Except these, this type of handlebar locks into place and feels as stiff as non-folding bars. The pegs also come off without tools if you need them to, so this seated scooter gets skinny fast. If you listen to other reviews for the Roadrunner V1, they would say it weighs 55 pounds, and they're completely wrong because they just read the number off of the spec sheet. We weighed them both, and the V1 and V2 are both exactly 63.4 pounds. So it's not light, but relatively easy to load and about half the weight of the Roadrunner Pro. It still has a tossable, smaller than me feel to it. Here I am just yanking it up a few stairs. Best of all, because it has a removable battery and so many locking points, you can just lock it up outside and bring the battery inside to charge. Here are some pros and cons of the closest competitors we've tested here at Rider Guide. 
I'll start with what would be the toughest decision for me, which would be the 35 mile per hour Roadrunner V2 versus the 55 mile per hour Roadrunner Pro. The V2 is more affordable and has a much more bicycle like ride, whereas the Roadrunner Pro, despite its small stature, rides like a small fire breathing motorcycle with almost twice the weight of the V2 and more than twice the power. They'll both get you across town faster than a car, but the Pro has an endless throttle and loves to spin the front wheel, whereas the throttle on the V2 whooshes you forward very politely. If you love adrenaline, then I consider the Pro. But if you like your transportation fast but not furious, go for the V2. It has the same range and the added benefit of costing about half as much. You could also get an eMove Cruiser S and add a seat for about the same price as the Roadrunner V2. With the Cruiser S, you get the option of riding standing up, and both scooters have very similar performance, except the Cruiser has more range, and the Roadrunner V2 has 4 miles per hour faster top speed. But when seated, the Roadrunner definitely handles better than the eMove Cruiser. The Fluid Vista is another recent favorite of ours. It has identical weight and similar performance numbers to the Roadrunner V2 for a little less money, and Mitchell loves its big 10-inch flat-proof tires. They're both great commuters, but the Roadrunner V2 has 53% more range, and the Vista has no option to add a seat. I've said it before, but the Emu Roadrunner V2 has a rare combination of being very fast, but also very easy to ride regardless of your skill level. Delivery drivers love the Roadrunner because it's faster than a car in traffic, and also because you can ride 70 miles if you bring a spare battery along. It's a scooter with a really broad appeal, easier to ride than a rental scooter, but still fun for seasoned scooter veterans like Chuck because of the high top speed. But there are two groups I wouldn't recommend it for. Teens, while they could certainly handle the throttle response, they probably aren't ready for this type of top speed. And two, adrenaline junkies, because they're going to be better off with the endless power of the Pro version. We've got links to the latest pricing on both versions in this video's description, along with any coupon codes we could find for you. Thanks everybody for the likes, and thanks again to all of our subscribers. I'm Paul from Rider Guide. Enjoy your ride.